get Pastor Joe where we're allowed to wreck him. Let's get some breakthrough tonight. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Praise the Lord, somebody. Come on, shout to the Lord. The Lord is good. If the Lord's been good to you, just clap your hands. Yeah. Even when we're bad, he's still good, right? Praise Jesus. Well, it's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight, to be able to share God's word, of course. Um, I thank Pastor Marco uh, for sharing uh, the stage. Uh, he d doesn't have to do this at all. He does a fantastic job by himself. Uh, but he lets uh, people come up here and, and share, and I appreciate it. I'm totally humbled and honored to be able to speak to you tonight. Tonight's subject is really deep. It's about addiction. And I, I, was, I was a victim or a participant of addiction. Uh, I came to church that way, and I remember being in a crowd like this, um, just completely loaded and drugged out. And I knew that I was in the right place to get free. But it didn't happen instantaneously. It took the course over several months of coming to church every week, every week, every week, loaded, faded, drunk, strung out. And God just began to peel back these layers and deliver me week after week after week. And I begin to get free. If you're in this room and you struggle with addiction, and in a moment, uh, you probably, you might find out some things that we can addi get addicted to, uh, maybe you didn't even know. Uh, you could be addicted and not even know it. That's the truth. Um, when we go over the list of uh, addictive behaviors, um, I was going through the list, and I'm pretty sure I was addicted to all of them. That makes me qualified to speak tonight, uh, that God delivered me from a lot, a lot of things. Amen. So I'm grateful to the Lord. Uh, let's pray, and then you can be seated. Father, we thank you and bless you for this opportunity, and we pray, God, that your spirit, your word would touch every man, woman, and child, Lord, in this room, that you would break the spirit of addiction, God, beginning tonight in somebody's life, God, that you would set people free tonight and loose the chains and uh, rebuke the devil, God, and allow people to just get free tonight under the power of your word and through faith in Jesus. We thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Give your neighbor a high five on your way down. In 2001, I took a friend home uh, who was addicted to drugs. I took him home because I wanted to help him get free from drugs. And, you know, I thought bringing him home would help him, you know, have a place to expose him to God, uh, maybe uh, expose him to church, to, to prayer, to the word. So, I brought him home, and, and the mis I made a mistake, though. I, I took him to uh, a, a Christian drug dealer. I know that sounds funny, but a Christian drug dealer, well, what is that? Well, another word for Starbucks. I took him to Starbucks to get some coffee, and I ordered one of those those kind of looks like a shake or something like a, I think it's Frappuccino. And I turn around and he's coming with five shot glasses of espresso and some chocolate covered coffee beans. And um, I felt like, wow, what am I doing here with this guy? I'm trying to get him clean. And probably this is not a good idea for him to be here in this place. And the Lord was uh, correcting me at the same time too, saying, uh, you shouldn't be here either. Because you can be addicted to something and not even realize it. And just because it's lawful, it doesn't mean that it's beneficial. Just because is acceptable, it doesn't mean I'm free to accept it, right? 
This topic of addiction is a very, very serious topic. All of us in this room have had somebody in our lives who has become a victim to addiction, and maybe through the course of their addiction, uh, maybe they even overdosed and died. I think everybody in this room knows somebody close to them or knows somebody who knows somebody who has passed away or died because of an overdose. This is a real uh, issue that we're facing in our country today. Not only in our country, but across the world, right? Drugs are running rampant everywhere. The drugs are more stronger than ever. And people are losing their lives faster and faster, quicker and quicker, because you don't need much to overdose these days. And so with uh, uh, the invention of, of these drugs that uh, are killing people, um, we as a church need to do something about it. We can't just watch and people keep dying. We have to get healthy. We have to get free so that we can free others, so we can help someone else. So it's imperative that you get free. If you're struggling with addiction, you must get free first, and then God will give you the anointing and the power to help someone else to get free. And so I'm believing tonight that someone is going to get free tonight from addiction. Amen? So let's talk about what is addiction. Addiction is choosing and pursuing something or someone apart from God in a habitual pattern or repetitive manner in order to meet a particular need despite the negative consequences that may occur. Addiction involves choice. It takes human will an effort to pursue addiction. So it's not all, all demonically controlled. You have to participate in addiction. Y your will goes along. The effort goes along. Just think about all the effort that drug addicts will go through to get drugs. How much effort a drunkard will go just to drink and get drunk. There's a lot of human will and effort involved, and it's just not all Satan's fault. It's our fault, too, because it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to be addicted. <laughs> I say it takes more work probably to be addicted than it does to be sober. The things you do for drugs, climb out windows, rob people, rob stores. I mean, crazy things just for drugs. The truth is when a person becomes addicted, they extend large amounts of effort and time and money to pursue their addictions, often at the expense of more important things such as God, ministry, family, relationships, and health. All addictions neg negatively affect the human mind, the human body, the human spirit, all addictions affect these three uh, parts of our being in a negative way. Addictions can be both chemical and behavioral. And here's a list of both types. Let's start with chemical addictions. Can include alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, cocaine, amphetamines, prescription drugs, opioids, marijuana, inhalants, PCP, LSD, hallucinogens, and any others I didn't name because I know addicts tend to make their own concoctions sometimes. All of these are habit forming. All of these are addictive chemicals. And I think in the inner city, all of us have been exposed to them at one time or another. Some behavioral addictions include food. It ain't all just about the drug ass. Come on. You could be addicted to food like excess food. Sweets, soft drinks. You can be addicted to sex. Computers, internet, 
cell phone, television, video games, pornography, shopping. Uh Uh-oh, come on, help us, Jesus. (laughs) Gambling. You can be addicted to your self-image on how people portray you uh, on social media. All these are addictions, and all of these did not come from God. And God addresses them all in the Bible as sinful behaviors. So let's take a test and, and, and consider this question, am I addicted? Think about that the thing that you do all the time, repetitiously, all daily maybe even. Think about that thing and, and let's, let's see if you're addicted just by doing this, this one thing. If you're not addicted, then stop. I'm I'm not addicted to alcohol. That's great. Stop. I'm not addicted to my phone. That's fine. Turn it off. So if you want to find out if if you're addicted to something, stop doing it. You'll find out real quick. Stop doing it or stop doing it for long periods of time. You could do that with any of those things on the list, including eating. That's called fasting. If you can't fast, you're addicted to food. Come on, help us, Jesus. I'm going to talk about seven things you need to know, and I'm going to go through, through these like rapid fire, so uh, get your phones out, and take pictures, or take some snapshots. Seven things you need to know. Number one, addiction is spiritual warfare. It's warfare with demons over provinces, dominions, regions, territories. Wherever there is an addiction, there is also a demon taking and attempting to occupy the territory. And it's a demon's job to make sure that you stay addicted and ultimately destroy your life. His assignment is to destroy you, to steal, to kill, and destroy you. How he destroys you is irrelevant. Whether he uses heroin or processed sugar, his goal is still to end your life. He'll use opiates, drugs, but you never think that he'll use Twinkies to give you diabetes, to kill you at an early age. Before you finish your walk, before you finish your ministry, before you finish your assignment, the devil is trying to kill you. And we have to get a grip on these things. We have to get victory over these things. Nothing should rule over you. The Spirit of God should rule over everything, whether it be chemical or behavioral. Ephesians 4.27 says this, do not give place, territory, or a foothold to the devil. The devil is trying to get his foot in the door. Just a foot, just some wiggle room. Anything he can get, he'll take. And the idea is that we can't give demons space to occupy We can't give them territory to occupy. I don't care if it's a kitchen cupboard or a bathroom or a garage. We cannot give the devil any inch of territory. Second thing you need to know. The spirit of addiction's goal is to take and possess your house, which is you. Habakkuk 1.6, it says, They will march across the earth 
they will take or possess houses and cities that don't belong to them. These are demons that do this. Your house, your body, your temple belongs to God. But as long as a demon is here, he will attempt to take possession of that house if you allow him to come in. The Bible says that they march around the city looking for houses or for people to invade. So addic addictive spirits are like home invasion robbers. Even though it's, it's not their home, they're trying to get in the home and possess what is not theirs. You may own the home, but you got a demon in the home. You got a thief in the home. You got an addicted spirit in the home. You got, you got a demon inside that shouldn't be there. And it's our job as Christians to have the authority and the power to kick those things out of our life. Number three, addiction gains access to a person if they have a lazy spirit, are weak in their flesh, or have an unrenewed mind. Matthew 26, Jesus says, stay awake and pray for strength against temptation. Your spirit wants to do what's right, but your body is weak. The way you overcome addiction is by sleeping less and praying more. You, what do you, yeah, you sleep less, read your Bible more. You sleep less, you go to church more. Sleep less, worship more. more less of the flesh, more of the spirit. The idea is to grow your spirit to be stronger than your flesh. If you don't do that, then you're going to fall victim to your flesh and to your mind and you have an addictive nature to you. Because your spirit man, so small, he can't fight the addiction. And so it's important that you stay in your word, you stay grounded, you seek God, you, stay, you get on your face in prayer, you pray in tongues, you do everything necessary to grow your human spirit. That's called spirit living. That's called uh, being spirit led. Prayer is what's gonna provide you the strength necessary to overcome addiction. When you pray in the spirit or when you pray in tongues, you're not thinking about playing video games, smoking speed, or having sex with your girlfriend. When you pray in the spirit, you're connected to God. It's like you have a, an umbilical cord that's attached to God. And whatever he's eating, you're eating. Whatever, whatever he's partaking of, you're partaking of. You're in direct line with the Father. And so if you have that gift, it is necessary, essential to help you get free and overcome addiction. Number four, addictions are maintained and reinforced by demonic strongholds of seduction, deception, control and manipulation anything that maintains power over you is a stronghold if it has power over you it's a stronghold whether it be drugs or food or anything else if it if it's controlling you and then it's ruling over you it has dominion over you it has territory over you the Bible says in Corinthians chapter 10, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. You should not have any strongholds in your life. God has given you the power, the weapons, how to fight, the warfare. He's given you everything you need to tear down and destroy every stronghold of addiction that you are facing today. 
Number five, addiction is sin. Once a demon recognizes a person's vulnerability and accessibility, that demon will use addictions to entice that person into sin, dependency, bondage, and even death. James 1.14 says everyone is tempted by their own cravings. By, and then they're lured away and enticed by those cravings. And once those cravings conceive, the Bible says they give birth to sin. The words conceive, it's like uh, your craving is having intercourse with a demon. The thing that you're desiring is having intercourse uh, 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 with an addictive spirit. And any time a conception is there, it's going to give birth to something. And it's and it giving birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it brings forth death. The devil is trying to kill you. And so it, it, the idea is that I have no cravings. I take away every form of enticement. I, I, I won't be bound to anything. I won't let anything rule over my life. I have to watch out. I have to be careful. I, I can't let anything govern what I'm doing apart from God. God should be in control. God should direct my life. God should guide my steps. God should govern my thoughts. If I don't do that, then a demon will come in and do that. My flesh will do that. Or my sinful nature will do that. And I'll find myself in sin again. And I don't know about you, but I didn't, I didn't come to a relationship with Jesus so I could stay stuck in sin. I wanted to get delivered from sin. I didn't want sin to rule over me. I wanted to conquer sin. Because I know that Jesus paid the price for every sinful nature that I have. Number six. All forms of addiction are acts of idol worship, including the chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> anytime, someone say anytime. Look at your neighbor, say anytime. Uh, anytime we form bonds and habitual habits outside or in place of God, these habits will deter us from God and attempt to replace God. Addictions are designed to take you away from God, even if it's just for a moment. They're designed to replace God. They're idols. The Bible says in Exodus, the Lord says, I am the Lord, your God. I am your master. I am your owner. I am your savior. I am your God. I am your ruler. I am your maker. I am the Lord, your God. And then he says this, I am the one who freed you. I freed you from what? From your slavery, from your hurt, from your pain pain, from your depression, from your sorrow, from your demonic habits, from your addictions, from your lust. He says, I am the Lord, your God. Drugs are not your Lord. Alcohol is not your Lord. Jesus Christ is your Lord. He says, I am the Lord. And he says this, you must not worship any other gods but me. If you want to be free, then you're going to have to become an exponential worshiper of God. You're going to have to become a true worshiper of God. Be 
because a true worshiper of God knows who his God is and is not ashamed to worship his God, not ashamed to praise his God, not ashamed to glorify his God. A true worshiper worships God everywhere. Worship God in your car. Worship God in the, in the marketplace. Worship God at the ball game. You're constantly in fellowship and in worship with God. And nothing is allowed to take his place. Nothing takes God's place. If I'm doing it, I'm doing it with God. If I'm eating, I'm eating with God. If I'm driving, I'm driving with God. If I'm hitting weights, I'm hitting weights with God. Everything is God. He's my Lord. Praise the Lord. Number seven. Look how fast we did that. Number seven. Addictions form in places where God is either neglected, voided, or absent. Wherever God is not worshipped, addictive spirits will occupy and take possession of those places. If you have a place in your life where God is absent, void, or neglected, a demonic spirit will try to occupy that space. Every space must belong to God. Or a demon will try and come and possess that space. Possession is not merely under the control of a spirit. It also means to gain mastery over a person or a place. If a demon can't access a person, it'll settle for a place. And a demon will stay in one place that he's been given access to. He'll stay there for hundreds or even thousands of years. They have, no, they have no time to, to, to lose. They will wait there for you to pass through those areas. And, and if you're not careful, you can find yourself backslidden. You thought you were doing good until you went through a certain room in the house or through a certain street in the neighborhood or you passed by a certain person. I mean, you were doing good. You, you took all the Holy Warriors classes and you were on fire for God. And then all of a sudden you find yourself on your face again. Because a, a demon is, is occupying a space that you haven't taken care of yet. I used to have a place like that uh, when I first got saved. It was the garage. And I'd do really, really good until I went to the garage. Because when I went to the garage, there was a box in the rafters. And in that box was all, all uh, the articles that I saved you know, just in case this Jesus thing didn't work out. I had, I had drug paraphernalia. I had a, 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 a bong in there. I had pipes in there. I, I had pornography books in there. I had, I had phone numbers. Uh, this was before they had less. You could store all your phone numbers. You had to write them down in a black book. Oh, come on, somebody. And so I had my, my little black book was in there with all, with all the drug dealers' numbers and all the weird, wicked women's numbers were in there. And I could be in the house praying in tongues and having a hallelujah time. But the moment I hit the garage, there was a demon there that was stronger than me. And it would overtake me and I would go to the box. And what God was saying is that you got a principality living in your garage. 
and you've given him possession and because he has possession he's ruling over you but I'm here to tell you that I want every single corner of your house every hallway every closet every bathroom to be filled with my spirit and so I had to throw that box away I had to do an idol crushing before we had idol crushing I burned that box right there on the curbside and the moment I did that is the moment I got breakthrough the moment I did that is the moment I got free the moment I did that is the moment I got delivered You can't have one inch of your home belong to the devil. They'll just kick it there. It could be in a corner of a house. They'll just kick it. They don't care. You have to sweep through your house. Pray through your house. Worship through your house. Pray in the Holy Ghost through your house. You got to take authority and ownership of your house. The Bible says, as for me and my house, we will what? Yeah, you know, the key to overcoming addiction is to fill every void, every place in your life with the presence of God. That includes your car, your backyard. Everything is filled with God's presence. As a matter of fact, you walk in his presence. You're constantly walking in his presence. You're not coming in and out of his presence. You're staying in it. And so it doesn't matter where you go. The devil can't take your authority. Praise the Lord. Revelations chapter 12 verse 11 says this and they the people of God overcame and conquered him who the devil because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony God has given you overcoming power if you have Jesus you have the power to overcome any addiction what do you need to overcome uh, well you need something to overcome you need a, a, a demon to face. Uh, you need a sparring partner. Uh, you need the blood of the lamb. You need Jesus in your life if you want to overcome. You need a testimony. You need those three things to overcome something. You need a demon, you need Jesus, and you need your testimony. But, but you don't receive a testimony until you overcome your devil. Addiction it can be uh, just merely a test that, that's going to present you to you or lead you to your testimony. Because people need to hear that you were lost and then you were found. People need to hear that you were blind, but now you see. People see that you couldn't walk, and now all of a sudden you're running to the you're running for God. People need to see that you were bound, but now you're free. That's a testimony. If you got a testimony in the house tonight, just shout to the Lord real loud. Revelations 3, 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. How many overcomers we got? Get used to wearing white clothes. He who overcomes, God said he's going to dress you in white garments. He's going to blot, he's going to blot his name out. Uh, I mean, I, he says, I will not blot out uh, your name out of the book of life. He says, but I will confess your name before my father and before his angels. My goodness, if you overcome, God's going to brag about you. God's going to tell angels about you. God is going to, going to brag to, uh, to the father about you. Look at my son. Look at my daughter. They were bound, but look at them now. They overcome. They overcame their addiction. They overcame their lust. They overcame uh, their depression. Look Look at my son. Look at my daughter clothed in white. Praise the Lord. Revelations 3, 21. He who overcomes. 
I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne. Good God. What did he just say? He overcomes what? It's crazy. He overcomes, I will grant to sit down with me on my throne. Man, if you overcome, you'll be dressed in white and you'll be sitting next to Jesus. Praise the Lord. He said, I'll grant to him or to her to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. My goodness, you'll be there with the Father God. You'll be there with Jesus. You'll be sitting there with them uh, on the throne of God. Praise the Lord. And he says this, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Listen to the Spirit. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. Listen closely. Because as the world gets darker and more addicted, God's people are going to get more free. And that is going to help liberate and bring salvation to the world. Are a bunch of free Christians who aren't bound by anything. They're going to have the anointing. They're going to have the capacity. Uh, they're going to have the power. They're going to possess the authority to help people that are bound. So don't waste another minute trying to fill voids with addictions. If you've been doing this long enough, you know that uh, these voids, uh, they can't be filled. It's like trying to fill a container with a hole in it. It, it only creates an addictive cycle of continued emptiness. You keep trying to fill it, but it keeps running out. You can't fill any void apart from God. God is the only one who could fill every void in your life. You need God to do this. Can anyone testify to this right now? Give God a shout of praise in this house. And so what we want to do here while we close is we want to bring the altar team up and we're going to take care of business. We're going to take care of business tonight. And here's what I want you to do. If you looked at that list and you have any of those struggles of addiction and you want to be free tonight, I want you to come to the altar. Just get out of your seat right now and come to the altar. Come down to this altar and meet Jesus. He's going to fill that void in your life right now. Come on, get out of your seat. Come on down here. And then here's what I also want to do. If you know somebody in your life who's addicted, who has a drug issue, a dependency issue, I want you to come down here tonight and we're going to intercede for them. Because the devil is really, really trying to destroy their life. And if we don't start praying for them, then we're essentially saying we're giving up on them. We can't give up. Tell somebody, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Tell the enemy, I'm not giving up. We're going to conquer this. We're going we're gonna to master this. We're going to gain authority over this. I'm not giving up. Don't give up. In uh, Philadelphia and Kensington, I want to show this, uh, these video clips real quick. Look up, look up at your screen and see if they can put these clips up here. But this is what's going on in, in, in America, in, in Philadelphia. that's just one clip you got people walking around these streets completely loaded demonized lost bound addicted it's right in our face 
The devil is, is coming at us like a roaring lion. It's just right in our face. And here's the thing. You can't look at those, those men and women and say they're just a bunch of drug addicts. Because that was me. That was you. That is somebody's son. Somebody's daughter. That is a creative soul that God created. And it should, uh, it should offend you. It should stir something up in you. That is not acceptable. What the devil's doing there is simply not acceptable. And he's trying to do the same thing in San Bernardino. You know that. And we as a church, we have to get free so that we can go out there and help save souls. Are you with me tonight? Stretch your hand. Say, Jesus, I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Come in right now and fill every void. Possess me. Fill me now. I receive salvation, power, authority, forgiveness that comes from you. I receive it right now by faith. And I declare war against the enemy, against every spirit of addiction. I declare war over it. I receive the victory of Jesus. I have the authority of Jesus. I have the power of Jesus. And I have the spirit of God living in me. And I refuse. Stretch your hand out. I refuse to be bound. And receive. Praise the Lord. Raise your hand. The Holy Spirit is pouring on some people right now. I refuse to be bound. I'm an overcomer. Drugs go in the name of Jesus. Addictions go right now in the name of Jesus. Chains break in the name of Jesus. Fetters of iron break in the name of Jesus. We declare right now our victory in Christ. Worship the Lord. Worship God right now. Come on, let's worship God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Come on, worship God. Clap. Glorify the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let, worship God with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. Come on, worship Him. That addiction is breaking. It can't be here no more. It's got to go. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for every person. Continue to do your work, to do your will here tonight. We give you all the praise and glory. And Jesus matches lame. Somebody say amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. If you need prayer, the altar's open. You got something? Yeah. Don't forget, if you need prayer, if you need personal prayer for breakthrough in your life, you need to overcome an addiction, I want you to stay up here at the altar. If you need a, a personal prayer, and just we're going to find someone to pray with you. Don't forget, church, that we, we are pushing right now. Women, sign up tonight for the women's conference. Tickets are going to go fast. And also, don't forget, we have 350 seats available for the movie. And for those that register and purchase their tickets tonight for lead night, we got 30, the only 350 seats available for that movie premiere. We're going to premiere that movie, so you don't want to miss that opportunity. Lead night tickets are going fast. We want to make sure you get yours. Richard Montanez, Devon Franklin, Pastor Marco will be there May 21st, a Sunday night. We love you so much, church. Don't forget, if you need prayer, we'd love to pray with you coming up. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you. This Friday, this Friday, I believe, this Friday is Men's and Women's Unity Night. All the men are coming here at 7 p.m. All the women are also coming here at 7 p.m., a men's and a women's service this Friday at 7 p.m. We'll see you guys there. Love you so much. God bless you. We also have service on Sunday, end time series. There's a lot going on right now. Love you so much. God bless you.